the St. Regis Parish family gathers to celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Next Sunday is the St. Regis Parish picnic at the Monroeville Municipal Park, Pavilion Number 2, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. A mass will be celebrated at noon in the Park Pavilion. The parish will provide the burgers, hot dogs, chicken, drinks, and more. You are asked to bring a covered dish item based on your last name. See the bulletin for more details. We need to know how many are coming, so please also RSVP using the form found in the bulletin and return it today in the offertory basket or to the parish office by this Monday, August 15th. See you next Sunday from noon until 4 p.m. Please pick up the hymnal and turn to the opening hymn, number 909, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 909. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we come to offer glory and praise to our God, who has called us into his midst, and calls us to uh, burn with that fire of divine love that we hear Jesus speak of today. As we begin our celebration, let us call to mind our sins those times that we have turned away from or refused God's love in our lives. And let us ask our merciful God for pardon and peace. You came to set the earth ablaze with love for God. Lord, have mercy. 
You have drawn us out of the pit of destruction. Christ, have mercy. You have taken your seat at the right hand of God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebed-Melech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebed-Melech the Cushite to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. 
shelter of the Lord Most High, who abide in the shadow of our God. Say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, the God in whom I trust. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. No evil shall befall you. No pain come near, for his angels stand close by your side, guarding you always and bearing you gently, watching over your life. Secure in his love, lifted high those who trust in his name. Call on the Lord, he will never forsake you, he will bring you salvation and joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies ahead before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father. A mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother. A mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. When we think about fire, many things will pop into our minds. Fire gives heat, it gives light. We think of fire, we probably, one of the first things we think of is its destructive nature. Um, You know, nobody wants to have your house on fire because it does, destroys your house. Um, You know, we're in summertime, it's forest fire season out west. You know, we see pictures of forest fires out in California or, you know, this summer there have been forest fires over in Europe. Um, And we know, you know, it looks very destructive. And fire is destructive. But fire is also purifying and creative. You think about a forest fire. You know, if, if you're old enough to remember the summer of 1988, it was very hot and very dry. And there were huge forest fires out west in Yellowstone and in Montana and Wyoming. And if you recall, it's, it burned like a big part of the summer and into the fall and the fires were not finally extinguished until the snow started to fall that year. And it was a huge, a huge chunk of Yellowstone National Park was on fire. There was all this destruction. And, you know, people were wringing their hands. What was going to happen? You know, there were, you know, uh, wildlife was killed and so much was affected. And yet by the following year, where all of that destruction had happened, there was recreation. You know, there was new growth. And amazingly, how quickly the forest began to regenerate. Some of the forest that had burned had not been on fire in the lifetime and the lived experience of anybody out there. And so they didn't know what to expect, and yet all of this new life grew. They discovered that there were varieties of pine trees that the, the pine cones on the pine trees don't even pop open unless they're exposed to heat. And so there was... Recreation, uh, you know, purifying, you know, getting rid of the old to make room for the new. You know, even sometimes when a building catches on fire as destructive as it is, something new can be created. And so fire is destructive, but it's also purifying. So we have Jesus today speaking of this fire. I have come to ignite a fire on the earth and how I wish it were already blazing. What is that fire, that fire that Jesus has come to ignite? It is the fire of divine love. That is the heart of the ministry of Jesus. He has come to reveal the nature of divine love in his person and in his ministry. And divine love revealed by Jesus is radical. The love that Jesus is revealing, the fire that he has come to ignite, is not for the faint of heart. The love that Jesus reveals is not warm and squishy. 
but it is powerful. The power of divine love is sometimes destructive, and it needs to be, but it's also purifying. That fire of divine love is necessary to burn out the impurities from our lives. The fear, anger, frustration, selfishness, injustice, prejudice, anything that we can think of that is contrary to the gospel, that fire of divine love, if we truly choose to expose ourselves to that divine love, burns out those things in us so that our love and our faith is more pure. And that is the fire that Jesus has come to ignite. That is the fire that burned in Jeremiah's heart as he went about his ministry as a prophet. Jeremiah had to speak a message of God's justice to powerful people, including the king, who were weak and corrupt and unjust. And we hear today they plot to get rid of him, throw him in the cistern. But God delivers him so that he can continue to proclaim his message. We know in the Gospels how often Jesus is being opposed by those who like things the way they are. The Pharisees like things the way they are. The priests and the scribes like things the way they are. Pontius Pilate and the Roman government like things the way they are. But the fire of divine love is meant to burn out all of those things because things the way they are are not good enough. When in our hearts there continues to be hatred, when in our world there continues to be injustice, We are called as disciples to run the race that is before us. As we hear today in the letter to the Hebrews. And we're reminded that we have witnesses all around us, a great cloud of witnesses. We can look to history, the history of the church. And we see saints of all kinds that were human beings just like us. We look at their their heroic virtues and everything else that they did. But keep in mind, they were human beings just like us, subject to temptation. Some of the great saints that we hold up for virtue, they knew sin, and they had to overcome sin to burn out of their lives all of those things contrary to the gospel of Christ. That's what allows the martyrs to have the courage to die. That's what gave great men and women throughout the, history of the, throughout the history of the church the grace and the understanding to do amazing things in their charity and their virtue that allowed married men and women to persevere and thrive in the sacrament of marriage faced with all the same challenges that every married couple today is. We have that great cloud of witnesses around us to give us an example. We have a great cloud of witnesses around us today. We can look at others in the world today. We look sometimes at people very close to us who exhibit great gospel virtues, helping us to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. so that we can burn out of our lives all of those things 
that are contrary to the gospel so that our hearts can burn more fully with the love of Christ, that can burn more fully living the gospel, running the race before us, and growing in the faith. And yes, sometimes there's great challenge. If it were easy to live the faith, everybody would do it. But we know there are challenges. And sometimes if we are steadfast in the faith, when that pure love of Christ is burning in us, it will cause conflict in the world. That love that was burning in the heart of Jeremiah upset the powers that be because he was challenging their being comfortable. Jesus is opposed because those who were rich and powerful and influential felt uncomfortable, to say the least as he preached God's justice and mercy and love. When the fire is burning in us, sometimes it's going to make us a little bit uncomfortable because we recognize that we still have those impurities in our hearts. All of us have those little dark corners of our lives. Rivalry or jealousy or pettiness or hatred or grudges, or God forbid, prejudice. We need the fire of God's love to consume those things and make our hearts more pure, following the example of those who have come before us, growing in that faith that is ours, and keeping our attention firmly focused on Christ Jesus as we do. so that as the fire burns in us, we can help bring that fire of the gospel, that fire of God's love to the world, where there is still so much injustice and so much hatred and so much bitterness and so many things that shield the light of Christ from burning. And so as we come to our celebration of the Eucharist today, May that prayer of Jesus be ours. Jesus has come to ignite a fire on the earth. He calls us to allow that fire to burn in our hearts. Let us pray that through God's grace, through the Eucharist that we share, that fire of God's love burns in us, that fire that Jesus has come to ignite. And as we go out into our world that so desperately needs to hear it, that so desperately needs to benefit from the light and the heat of God's love. May we be bearers and ministers of that fire in our world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are in constant need of God's love and mercy. Let us now offer these prayers to him. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, Surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, believers in every age, may we in our generation run the race, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For prophets of justice who, like Jeremiah, suffer for speaking the truth, may the world heed the urgent call to lay down its weapons of destruction especially in Ukraine, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in seminaries, especially young men in our diocesan program, may they know the support and love of the community as they grow in self-awareness and continue to discern God's call, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this Eucharistic assembly gathered here today, May we carry the gospel's fire in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died as victims of persecution or violence, and for all the dead, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way Jim and Shirley Diana, we pray. for the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. Lord God, you are our source of hope, our strength, and protection in times of need. Hear the prayers we bring before you and come to our aid through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. 
until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, Larry, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Pontian, Saint Hippolytus, Saint Regis, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus has taught us to call God our Father, so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing the communion hymn, number 804, Here I Am, Lord, number 804.
I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who live and reign forever and ever. It's hard to believe the summer is winding down already, but school is quickly approaching, uh, and as, as the school year gets underway, the new year of faith formation is also going to be getting underway right after Labor Day, uh, and so we put out the call this time of year. We're always looking for new people to get involved in the catechetical ministry of the parish. Uh, we are especially in need of a kindergarten catechist this year, also some catechetical aids to assist in various areas. Uh, also, as we're coming out of the pandemic, we'd like to get back to having Children's Liturgy of the Word at Sunday Mass again, uh, starting in the fall, uh, and we need to have some uh, ministers for Children's Liturgy of the Word. Uh, you do not have to be Thomas Aquinas uh, in order to teach catechism. You do not have to have a theological degree. Uh, we give you the resources that you need, um, but what is required for catechetical ministry is that burning fire in our own heart uh, for the faith and the desire uh, to share that, especially with our young people, um, but also with parents and people of all ages. So I'd ask you to consider uh, getting involved in catechetical ministry. Uh, there's a little bit more about it in the bulletin today, and if you have any questions, uh, uh, specifics as far as what a catechetical aid does um, or what is required for a kindergarten catechist, um, you can talk to uh, Karen, you can email her or uh, give her a call in the office um, during the week. Um, also, ministry-wise, we're looking for some more Eucharistic ministers to the homebound. Um, you know, a lot of, we were all homebound there for a while, beginning of the pandemic, um, but some people are homebound all the time because of age or illness or whatever, um, and so it's a very special uh, privilege to be able to take the Eucharist to those who are shut in and homebound and not able to join us. Um, when I go out to visit parishioners, I tell them all the time, they, you know, they thank me for coming, and I say, well, you know, uh, sometimes you need the church to come to you, and that's what Eucharistic ministers to the homebound do. Uh, take the Eucharist, and um, it's a way of connecting, keeping our, all of our parishioners uh, connected to the life of the parish. So I'd ask you to consider um, 
all of those uh, ministry opportunities or you know, we're always looking for more people to get involved in ministry and that's what the life of the parish is all about. Not one of us can do everything, but all of us can do something. And so I'd ask you to prayerfully consider that. Um, also, reminder, the picnic next Sunday. If you haven't RSVP'd yet, please get that in uh, by Monday uh, so that we can uh, plan accordingly for the picnic. Um, always a very nice gathering, starting with Mass at noon next Sunday. So we'll have the two regular Masses and then Mass at the picnic at noon. Um, also, don't forget the Trafford Elementary School uh, PTO uh, uh, school supply drive. Um, the bass, the uh, uh, containers, there's one out in the main gathering space and one as you exit to the parking lot, um, they'll be there through next weekend. So please get the, your supplies in by next weekend. And finally, on Monday is the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's normally a holy day of obligation, but it's one of those when it falls on Monday, there's no obligation to go to Mass. Uh, so the only Mass for the day will be 8 o'clock on Monday morning. Uh, if you, for those who want to come to Mass, uh, parish office, please note, will also be closed on Monday and reopens on Tuesday morning. And always read the bulletin. <laughs> the Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing the closing hymn, number 795. I want to walk as a child of the light. Number seven, nine, five. Jesus.